Good morning, students. I hope you are all safe and sound at home. During the holidays, you must have enjoyed the stories, and uh, you must have done the work given to you. And the last class, I gave you one more story to read. Now today, I am going to explain the same. You must have heard about Hedy in your earlier classes or read the stories about Hedy. Hedy, Hedy was a very active and smart girl, and she was an awesome. Now, let's start the chapter. At grandfather's cabin, Hedy by Janana Spirey is a book about a young orphan girl called Hedy. There is a book named Hedy. It was written by Janana Spirey, and in this book you will read so many stories relating to Hedy. Now, <coughs> she was an orphan girl. Orphan girl. Orphan means whose parents have died. She is taken by her maternal aunt Tate to live with her grumpy grandfather. After her parents' death, she was taken by her maternal aunt. Maternal means the family related to mother. Anybody who is related to that family, like your mamu, mami, these are uh, these people are related to your mother. So they are called maternal aunt and maternal uncle. So she was taken <coughs> by her maternal aunt Jade to live with her grumpy grandfather. Grumpy, grumpy means angry, angry grandfather. He stays in a small cabin in the Swiss Alps. Eddie is not very welcome there at first as the old man is used to living on his own. When she went there, she was not welcomed. Nobody um, paid attention to her. But Hedy was such type of a girl who used to win the heart of others. Now, however, Hedy wins over her grandfather's love with her caring nature, cheerful personality, and love for nature. What does Hedy do on the first day at the grandfather's cabin? Read these extracts to find out. After date had disappeared, Hedy's grandfather sat down again on the bench blowing big clouds of smoke out of his pipe. Now her aunt, she disappeared and she saw her grandfather blowing big clouds of smoke out of his pipe, means he was smoking. He did not speak but kept his quiet faucet on the ground. In the meantime, Hedy looked about her and on discovering the goat shed peeped in. Nothing could be seen in sight, searching for some other interesting thing. Now, Hedy was there and she was not sitting at one place. She was searching around the hut. She saw the three old fir trees. Behind the hut, here the wind was roaring through the branches and the treetops were swaying to and fro. To and fro you know, to and fro means here and there, the three tops were swaying, swaying means they were moving up and down. Hedy stood still to listen. After the wind had ceased somewhat, she walked round the hut back to her grandfather. She found him in exactly the same position at planting herself in front of old men with arms folded behind her back. She gazed at him. Now, when she came to his old man, to this old man, he she stood there with her arms folded behind her back, as you see in the picture, and she gazed at him. She was ga gazed means she was looking at his um, grandfather, thinking something else. On looking up, grandfather saw the child standing motionless before him. What do you want to do now? He asked her. Now, can you tell me what type of sentence it is? It is an interrogative sentence as father is asking something. I want to see what is in heart. Now she replied, 
कि शी वॉन्टेड टू सी समथिंग वॉट एवर इज देन इन दट ना वॉट टाइप ऑफ सेंटेन्स इट इज इट इज एन अजर्टिव सेंटेन्स कम देन एंड विद दैट हेरीज ग्रैंड फादर गॉट अप एंड एंटर द कॉटेज टेक योर थिंग्स अलॉन्ग ही कमांड इट दिस इज एन इम्पेरेटिव सेंटेन्स स्टार्टिंग विथ फर्स्ट फॉर्म ऑफ द वर्क I do not want them any more," answered Hedy. Hedy said, "Ki she did not want. He, she did not want anything with her." The old man turning about threw a penetrating glance at her. Now, listening to this, the old man um, threw a penetrating glance. Penetrating glance means um, something uncomfortable if you feel, and something you want to. Um, know something about the other person that type of glance she he um, put on her the child's black eyes were sparkling in expectation of all all the things to come she is not lacking in intelligence he muttered to himself now the grandfather to- thought and he muttered to himself ki now the girl is not lacking the intelligence it means she was an intelligent girl allowed he added why don't you need them any more why don't you need them any more i want to go about like the light footed god she said i want to go about like light footed god light footed means freely freely having um um gate gracefully she wanted to move only gracefully without taking anything else with her all right you can but fetch the things and we will put them in the cupboard the child obeyed the command the old man now opened the door and hedy followed him into a fairly spacious room which took in the entire expense of the hut in one corner stood a table and a chair and in another grandfather's bed across the room a large kettle was suspended over the hearth now you see this is the description of the room in one corner there was a table and a chair and uh, in another one there was a grandfather's bed and across the room on the opposite side of the room there was a large kettle that was suspend, suspended over the <coughs> over the hearth hearth you know the floor at the bottom of a fire place you must have seen in movies the fire place in the uh, walls and on the um, floor of the the floor of the uh, fire place the kettle was suspended over there and opposite it a large door was sunk into the wall this hedy's grandfather opened it was the cupboard in which all his clothes were kept on one shelf were a few shirts socks and towels can you tell me what was there in the room ask yourself on one on there few plates cups and glasses and on the top shelf hedy could see a round loaf of bread and cheese in this cupboard our grandfather kept everything that he needed for living that was a small cupboard having all the things of grandfather when he opened it hedy pulled her things as far behind her grandfather clothes as she could reach she did not want them found again in a hurry after looking around attentively in the room she asked where am i going to sleep grandfather she asked ki where she is going to sleep what type of sentence this is an again an interrogative sentence wherever you want true he replied that suited hedy exactly she peeped into all the corners of the rooms and looked Uh, and looked at every little nook to find a cozy place to sleep look you know what is nook 
a small quiet place or a corner that is hidden from the people. So she peeped in all the corners of the room and looked at a very little nook to find a cozy place to sleep. Beside the old man's bed she saw a lighter. Climbing up she arrived at a hay loft which was filled with fresh and fragrant hay. Now she used the ladder and she climbed up and she found a hay loft over there. Hay loft you know mm -hmm. what is a hay loft? Hay loft is a um, on the farm you will see a small room that is used for hay. So she saw a hay loft which was filled with fresh and fragrant hay. Through a tiny round window she could look far down into the valley and there was also a window and uh, from there you she can see outside into the valley. I want to sleep up here. Hedi called down. Now she said ki she wanted to sleep over there. Oh it is lovely here. Please come up grandfather and see, see it for yourself. And she also offered her, her grandfather to come up. I know it. Sounded from below. I am making the bed now. The little girl called out again. While she ran busily to and fro. Oh, do come up and bring a sheet. Now she insisted her grandfather to come up and bring a sheet. Now again we have an imperative sentence. Grandfather for every bed must have a sheet. Now she said ki for every bed we need a sheet. Is that so? said the old man. After a while he opened the cupboard and rummaged around in it. For taking the sheet he opened his cupboard and rummaged. Rummaged means to see carelessly, uh, carelessly to uh, search something else. So for searching the sheet he carelessly removed the things here and there. At last he pulled out a long coarse cloth from under the shirts. It somewhat resembled a sheet. Now finally he found out the sheet and with this he climbed up to the loft. Here a little, neat little bed was already prepared. On the top of hay was heaped up high so that the head of the occupant would lie exactly opposite the window. Now the heap of that hay was made uh, in such a way that anybody, any occupant, occupant means who is occupying that place can lie and see the see through the window. Hedy's grandfather was well pleased with the arrangement and uh, to see that bed and arrangement Hedy's grandfather was very happy. To prevent the hard floor from being felt he made the couch twice as thick then he and Hedy together put the heavy sheets on the couch tucking the end in the well. Now they both slept over there and uh, they put and tuck the end of the sheet in well. In a proper way they put and they both slept. I think you must have enjoyed this story. And in the next class, we will be doing the exercise of this chapter and you will be taking your notebook along with me and a pencil along, uh, along with you. Okay, thank you for listening to me, beta.